Hello friends from YouTube and welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. I'm your host Lucas and today I am bringing a little bit of mysticism and science back into our hobby and we're going to discuss uh, transient voltages, capacitors and uh, diodes and I'm going to tell you guys today why capacitors are dead. But before we go down that road, I just want to clarify that none of this is my idea and I didn't come up with any of this. The science long predates our hobby and uh, I actually learned about this from the folks over at fpvchat.slack.com, most specifically the wizard. He's the one that actually pioneered this idea and bring it into their hobby. So before we go and discuss what's what, let's talk a little bit about the transient voltages. So when you have a quad and uh, when you have a quad, you have these like cool little motors right here. Well, there's a lot of current going into the motors. And by the way, I'm just gonna give you like the layman's version of this. I'm not an electrician. I'm probably gonna use the wrong terminology. So just uh, just come along. Anyway, so high, um, high current voltage flowing through here, motor spinning around, and it's switching the different coils and so on. What happens is every now and then you get these uh, transient voltages, which are spikes in voltage that go through the system and they can go back into your quad and make your gyro noisy and kill components like your camera or the VTX or anything sensitive at all. This is why we've been putting uh, capacitors in our builds all along. And you always try to put the capacitor closest to uh, the source of the transient, which would in our case would be the ESCs or the end of the power leads, which is where most people put them. Uh, they do an okay job. And the way they kill transients is by basically giving a little reservoir. So when the voltage spikes, it has to fill the reservoir first before it goes on. However, it's not actually uh, that good apparently. It doesn't work as well or so the literature that I have read and the people that I've talked to have led me to believe. I'm gonna include some links on the description so you guys so you can read uh, yourselves about these diodes and what I'm gonna discuss pretty soon and uh, we can all be on the same page. So, we've been putting capacitors on, they do an okay job, and along comes diodes. These are TVS diodes and TVS stands for transient voltage suppression. So these diodes are designed specifically to do what our capacitors are somewhat doing. I'm gonna show you here, I have a little bag from DGP. These just came in. And uh, basically these are these fat capacitor fat, uh, diodes right here. Uh, oh, let's see if we can get some focus, focus. There we go. So these are the diodes right here and uh, that I'm gonna be using on my next couple builds. So uh, make sure you subscribe because there's gonna be some builds where I'm actually gonna be doing this. Today I'm just gonna discuss it and tell you guys how it works and how you install them on your quads. So, um, these diodes, the way they work is they have a very specific uh, voltage range, operational range. When a spike comes through, it actually allows voltage to flow backwards into it, creating a shunt that prevents that voltage spike from going further into your components and damaging uh, your, your camera or like putting noise into your gyro. So uh, basically just keeps that transient away. And uh, the way it works is you install it uh, with reverse polarity. So the cathode or the negative on your diode is going to go on the V plus and the negative is going to, or sorry, the positive or the anode on your diode is going to go to the negative. So I'm going to show you guys here what it's supposed to look like on an ESC and how it would be lined up and where you'd wire this on your quad. Okay, so I'm going to try to show you guys right here what I'm talking about and hopefully it's not too close, but uh, we'll see. So we have the diode right here. <clears throat> and it has a little strip. Uh, let's see if you can see it there. So that little strip right there marks the cathode. So that's the negative side, this is the positive side. If you reverse this on your board or on your ESCs, you're gonna be very unhappy because it is gonna cause a fire. So before we go any further and I show you where this is gonna go, disclaimer, I am not responsible for you burning up your stuff if you do this wrong. And even if you do it right, like literally do this at your own risk, I'm gonna do it at my own risk, but uh, I do have it on good sources that this does work, so I'm willing to try it. Um, so again, cathode is the one with the little mark, and anode is the other side. So on, for example, a regular ESC, like uh, we have here some Cicada 30 amp, what you're gonna do is the cathode, which is the one with the little mark that I have right here, so you see the mark, is gonna solder that leg onto the positive lead and the negative lead on the other one. So it pretty much fits like right there. So you could pretty much just like bend the legs a little bit and put it right there. So you'd put one of these for each one of your ESCs. And what that would do is if there's a spike of energy between the ESC and the motor, that's gonna shunt backwards into the system through the Zener diode, the TVS diode that you have just placed backwards. So with the opposite polarity. That's important because if you put it the, this way, where it's like the bright polarity, so anode is touching the positive, cathode is touching the negative, you're gonna create a, a freaking short circuit and you're gonna burn this thing up and it's not gonna be cool. So make sure you reverse the polarity before you install it. 
This also works in four and one ESCs, which is what I'm gonna be doing on my next build. And uh, I actually, that's part of the reason why I wanted to try this as well is because I'm tired of having these capacitors, like huge capacitors on my builds, not really doing anything for me because my video is still not that clean. So I'm gonna try these because I think maybe these will work. So on the four and one ESC, this is also Cicada 35 amp. Uh, you're gonna do the same thing. So uh, the cathode is right here on this side and it's gonna touch the positive lead. And then the anode is gonna touch the negative lead. So you'd be able to put this right here, just bend the legs around a little bit so that they touch there and there, solder it all together, and there you go. You've protected the rest of your components from transients. So um, I'm gonna be trying that on my next build. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you wanna hear more about these TVS diodes and how they work out and to see them in action. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a, a three inch build and a five inch, and I think I'm gonna be using these on both uh, because they are actually lighter than capacitors as well. They take up less room. I don't have to like figure out how to glue it. It's just gonna solder very nicely nicely in place and be easy to use. So from everything that I've heard so far, uh, these diodes, the TVS diodes, and I will include a link in the description as well so you can uh, source them yourself from DigiKey, um, they should work better and actually do the thing that we think that the capacitors are doing. Now I haven't tried this yet, I'm going to be trying it on my next build which is coming up which is the SRD5, uh, sorry, the Strictly Racing Drones 5 inch and that's going to have some pretty beefy motors on it. So I'm going to try this on that build. So uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that. And uh, there's also going to be, uh, I'm going to be doing a video on tuning the PT-1. So everybody's been talking about PT-1. I think it's time for me to jump on the bandwagon as well and give you guys my impressions on how it works. So I'm going to be doing the Hyfe uh, five inch and uh, the Columbian Carbon Middleman. I'll be doing a video on those two and the PT-1 and how it all works out for me. So I hope you learned something today about the TVS diodes and the capacitors and why the TVS diodes are superior. I have um, a link uh, that discusses all the science behind you and shows you all the graphs and everything else. Um, to me, it looks good uh, and I'm gonna give it a shot and hopefully it clears up my video a little bit more because uh, I still get those lines every now and then. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, leave me a comment if you agree or disagree with this uh, whole TVS and capacitors being dead thing or if you just wanna talk. Uh, I'd love to hear from you guys. So take it easy.